sort of the assignment related to electromagnetic effects. Uh, today, I will discuss the structure questions related to the assignment. So in the first uh, structure question, the photograph shows a demonstration of AC generator. What happens in AC generator uh, when the coil rotates between the magnetic field? There is a change in a magnetic flux linkage, as you can see using the angle. When we rotate this coil between the poles of a permanent magnet, there will be a change in magnetic flux linkage, which induces EMF. So the handle is used to rotate the coil between the magnetic poles when a light emitting diode LED is connected across the coil, the LED flash on and off. Explain this observation. And remember, light emitting diode, as it allow, when the current is moving in a specific direction, it will operate, and the other way it will switch off. So if this is a suggestion for LED, the current direction of the current is this way, the LED will be on. But when the direction of the current is opposite, it will not allow that current to pass. So that moment, the light emitting diode will remain off. And when we are rotating this handle, there is a change in magnetic field which produces EMF or current, and that EMF or, or that EMF or the current is in opposite direction. Like it is continuously changing the direction, clockwise and anti-clockwise. So explain this observation, why it happened, why the LED or light emitting diode flash. So first thing, when this coil will rotate, there will be a change in magnetic flux linkage. And due to change in magnetic flux linkage, it will produce EMF. And when the circuit is complete, due to induce EMF, it will produce a current. And LED only allow the current, like it will operate only current in one way, the other way it will stop. So the rotation of the coil produce changing magnetic flux linkage. Which induce EMF and current start to flow. When circuit is complete. And which current it will produce as the coil is rotating clock continuously, the chain in magnetic field is there. So in that case, AC current or alternating current starts to flow when the circuit is complete. And why the diode flash? The diode only allow, or LED, light emitting diode, allow the current in only for one direction, like allow the current to flow in one direction. That's why when the direction is from the direction of P region, that it allow the current to pass and the LED will be on. But if it is in opposite to the direction, then LED will block that current. So in that moment, the current will, will not flow through the LED light emitting diode, so it will remain off. The next one, the output potential difference for a generator is recorded using a data locker. For a graph, produce uh, voltage in time, voltage against the time. Add to the graph, show output if the angular velocity of a generator is half. So if angular velocity, angular velocity, which is omega, also equal to two pi f. So, if angular velocity is half, means the frequency will also be half. Like if angular velocity divided by two, frequency means also divided by two. And what is the relation between frequency and the time period? Frequency and time period are reciprocal. If the frequency is divided by two, it means time period will be multiplied by two. So it means, this, like here, 
one cycle was taking 0.2 of a second, but then what will happen, one complete cycle will take 0.4 seconds. And as it will take longer time to change the magnetic field, the induced EMF will also reduce. So the cycle, as it is uh, around, uh, this value is around 5, so it will be 2.5. And so plus 2.5, minus 2.5 will be there for one complete cycle. And that one complete cycle will take 0.4. And same thing, plus 2.5. Minus 2.5, so there will be only two cycles in 0.8 seconds. So, two things will happen as a change is smaller changes there. The induced EMF it will produce a lower induced EMF and it will take a longer time as the speed is reduced. Explain the changes in the graph when the angular velocity of a coil, angular velocity of a coil is half. So, what happened? The, as the angular velocity is half, so it will take longer time. So the time period will be double. And uh, the change is half as well. That's why the induced EMF will also be half. The next one, the coil rotate in uniform magnetic field at original angular velocity. Like original angular velocity means we'll use this graph. This is our graph. Average magnitude of the voltage is 3.2 volts. Determine the number of the turns. The magnetic flux density is 0.083 Tesla and area of the cross-section is 0.0048 meters square. So the formula which we will use that according to the Faraday's law that the induced EMF equals to change in magnetic flux linkage. So delta in phi divided by delta T. So the average induced EMF that is 3.2. And what about phi? We know phi is equals to B dot A. So in place of this phi, we can write B A. So it's equals to the N is actually a constant. So we can say N B A divided by delta T. So we have the average induced EMF, which is 3.2. We have the area of the cross section, that is A. We have the strength of a magnetic field, so B is also there. We have, we want to find the number of turns, that's the unknown. And what about the time interval? So what time interval you will take? Because this, this is given an average magnitude. So for one cycle, what will the average time the total time for one cycle is 0.2. That's the total time. But I want to take average. So how to take average for this time interval? We'll check how many values of the voltage we'll have. Like it starts, so this is one value of the voltage, say V1. This will be the second value of the voltage, V2. Third value of the voltage, V3. And fourth value of the voltage, V4. So it means in this time, because this is a start, that's why I did not consider. So in, in one complete cycle, I will have four values. So if I want to take average time period, like example, the value is changing four times in one cycle. When it starts, it is starting with zero, but when it starts it becomes maximum, then minimum, then maximum and opposite, and then minimum. So the average voltage is given, we have to take the average time for one cycle. So what is the average time of the one cycle? 0 0.2 is there, is the total time for one cycle, and how many values are there in one cycle four? So 0 0.2 divided by, so, or I can also say 0 0.25 into 0 0.2. That's the time we will take. So we'll not take the full cycle, time for full cycle. As the average voltage is given, that's why we are taking an average time of one cycle. So whenever you're taking average time for one cycle, it is the total time divided by four. Or it is 0 0.25 into T. It's always the case whenever the average in new CMF is given. So when we substitute in the formula, we have in new CMF is equals to delta phi by delta t, where phi is P 
Ta, so we can also say that the new CMF is equals to N delta Ba divided by delta T. So in new CMF, that's 3.2. N, we don't know. This is 0 0.083. Area is uh, 0 0.0048. Divided by the time interval 0.25 into 0 0.2. And then we simplify it to get the number of turns, which is about 400 into turns. Is it uh, clear this one? So this is always the case whenever you have the in average magnitude of EMF, the time period, you will not take the full time, you will take for the, the average of the time period. Then in question 10, the northern lights are there, which is aurora, are colorful visual displays seen above the North Pole. They are created by interaction between air molecules in the upper atmosphere and the charged particle from the solar wind captured by the Earth magnetic field. And it also produces radio waves. Charges following in a flow, flow uh, following in a circular path emit electromagnetic uh, radiation at a frequency at their circular motion. Show that an electron with a speed of 400 km per second will emit a radiation with a frequency of about 200 kilohertz if it is moving perpendicular to a magnetic field with a magnetic flux density of 6.8 micro tesla. So we want to show that frequency which is produced when it is moving in a circular path is about uh, 200 kilohertz. So the idea is that when the object is moving in a circular path due to the magnetic field, so the magnetic force is equal to centripetal force. For like example, a charged particle moving in a circular path. So the magnetic, the centripetal force, the force which is directed toward the center is actually the centripetal force. So we can say that centripetal force is equal to magnetic. Then Centripetal force is given by a formula mv square over r. And the magnetic force is given by a formula qvp. And using this, we will work out the radius of this path, like what is the radius of a circular path. And using the radius, we can use, because we need a frequency, so we can use omega is equal to 2 pi f, or omega is equal to when a circular path is there, the angular displacement will use this formula, which is related to omega. Omega is equal to theta divided by t. But when complete circle is there, the circumference of the angular displacement will be equal to 2 pi r, when it's a complete round. So in that case, omega is equals to theta will be equal to 2 pi r, the angular displacement, and divided by t, which will be a time period. And Time period and frequency are reciprocal, so we can say omega is equal to 2 pi r into f. So, using this, we will we can work out the omega or the radius of the path. Using the radius of the path or time period, we can work out omega, and from omega, we can work out the value of the frequency. So first, the centripetal force is equal to mv square over r. Or it can be m r omega square. You can solve both ways. It does not make difference. And the magnetic force is qvb. So, this V, the speed, will cancel with the square. So we can work out the radius of this path. So M, MV divided by QB, because QB is here in the numerator and equals to R. So it will be MV divided by QB 
to be equal to R. When we substitute the values, M is the mass of electron. The constants are given. You don't have to memorize. So the mass of electron is 9.11 into next power minus 31. Then the speed at which this electron is moving, that is 400 kilometer. So you have to convert into meter. So it will be 400 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second. Divided by Q, the charge of electron, which is uh, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. And the strength of the magnetic field, which is 6.8 micro tesla. So we will write as 6.8 into 10 to the power minus 6. This will give us the radius of this circular path. So when we substitute the radius of the circular path, will come out as 0 0.335. And after working out the radius of a circular path, we can all, now we can work out the time period. And from time period, we can work out the frequency. So when an object is moving in a circular path, we also have the formula speed is equal to distance divided by time. So moving in a circular path, speed that is given in the question, which is 4 into 10 to the power, uh, 400 kilometer per second. So it will be 400 into 10 to the power 3. D is a distance. What about distance when moving in a circular path that is equal to the circumference? So we can say to by r and divided by the time t. So that is the time period. So using this, by substituting the value of r, I can work out time period. This is one way. What is another way? I first work out the value for omega. I can also use this formula omega is equal to. We know omega is equal to theta divided by t. When one complete rotation is there, so omega is equal to 2 pi divided by t. Last time I mentioned r here, but because this is angular displacement, so angular displacement for one complete revolution, it will be 2 pi, not 2 pi r. If it is a, a circumference like arc is there, then it will be 2 pi r. That is, when we say normal distance, it is 2 pi r, but angular distance or angular displacement is equal to 2 pi. So using this, or we can work out the value for like the time the omega, omega is equal to 2 pi divided by t, and then we can work out the value for t, and from t we can find the frequency. So better use this formula that speed is equal to distance divided by time. So speed of the electron is distance covered divided by time. So speed of electron which is 400 into the power five, uh, 3 because it is kilometer. The distance when move in a circular path, distance is equal to circumference. So 2 pi r divided by one complete revolution is the time is known as the time period. So we already have the r here, which is 0 0.335. So we'll substitute the value of r to get the value for t. And after working out the value of t, the time it will come out as 5.26 into the power minus 6 seconds. And from T, we can work out the frequency, which is reciprocal of the time period. So we substitute 1 over time period. That will give us a frequency, which is about 190 exponent 3 or 190 kilo hertz. Is it uh, clear this question? That how we work out the frequency of the electromagnetic radiations which are emitted out from this electron moving in a circular path. Okay, yeah, why I use 2 pi or 2 pi r? It depends on 
first thing we use centripetal force equals to magnetic force so using that we work out the value for r now we have two ways to do this question after getting the value of r one is speed equals distance divided by time as this electron magnetic field is perpendicular so this electron will move in a circular path so when an object move in a circular path speed is distance over time so in a circular path what is the distance travel distance travel equals to the circumference the distance travel equals to circumference that's why it is 2 pi r divided by the one complete rotation that is called time period so capital t and where v is the speed so this speed is given r we have already calculated by comparing the centripetal force with the magnetic force so we work out the time from this formula and after working out the time frequency is reciprocal of the time period so f equals 1 over t will give us the frequency at which this electron is rotating like how many times it complete vibration or motion in one second the second way to do this same question what we can use we can if i am using angular velocity so angular velocity is omega is equals to theta divided by t that's a formula for omega and because it's it's a omega what is omega means we did in a circular uh, the question we did this in circular motion that omega is the change in the angle with unit time like how much the angle changes in a unit time that's called omega so when the object rotate when it is a one complete revolution the change in angle will be equal to 2 pi 360 but we substitute in radian so that's why it is 2 pi and one complete rotation it will be t and then it will be omega and we know because here we don't know omega so we can find omega omega is we know v equals r omega so omega is equals to v divided by r so using v over r we can work out omega after getting omega we find a time period and after getting a time period we just take a reciprocal to get the frequency so if i'm using the angular velocity the angular displacement will be 2 pi like the change in angle 2 pi but if i'm using a simple formula for speed then the speed equal total distance and the total distance in a circular path equals to circumference that is 2 pi r is it uh, clear now so it depends on the question that whether uh, you want to use a radius or you can use angular velocity cosmic rays particle enters the earth's magnetic field follow the spiral path as you can see in the region of a north pole the magnetic pole field is vertically downward and the diagram shows the electron entering the section of a uniform magnetic explain why the electron follows a clockwise spiral downward as seen from above so if you are looking from above you will see that this electron will move clockwise and it will be spiral so what will be the reason for that look if this electron if you're looking this is you're looking from the top if this electron enter the magnetic field perpendicular then what will happen it will move in a circular path with a constant radius but what happened here when this electron enter it is making certain angle with the magnetic field so there are two components of the velocity one is a horizontal velocity horizontal component and the vertical like or one of the component of the velocity which is parallel to the magnetic field another one is perpendicular and the one which is parallel to magnetic field will not experience any force as the particle if it is moving same as the direction of magnetic field or opposite to direction of magnetic field it does not experience a force it should cut the magnetic field so as it's making an angle it will have parallel to the magnetic field and the perpendicular to magnetic field two components will be there so the velocity of this electron are there will be two components as a result what will happen the parallel component is not is the parallel component to magnetic field is not affected by like it will there's no resultant force on that so component of a motion which is downward is unaffected by the magnetic field because it is parallel 
but component of the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the magnetic field will experience the force because it is perpendicular to magnetic field it will experience the force and that will be a centripetal force which cause a circular motion and what about the force on this electron because first thing you should identify the force on electron so this, this component is not experiencing any force that is in parallel this will be the one which experience force so to work out the force because it's an electron so we can use for we can use a left hand and then opposite of a left hand that will the force on electron but for electron directly if you use a right hand that your index finger or first finger represent the magnetic field so your index finger or magnetic field should point downward the second finger of the right hand represent the direction of the particle which direction the particle is moving so that that we take a perpendicular component so if i use my right hand my index finger is pointing down and my second finger is pointing in the direction of the particle where my thumb is pointing that represent the force so when you apply the rule here you will find that your thumb is pointing into the paper. So the force is into. So this, this particle, when it enters, it will experience a force into. And the part and the other component, there is a parallel component. So this this will experience a force into and it will move downward like this. Moving clockwise and moving downward. Why moving downward? Because there's a parallel component. Why clockwise? Uh, because there's a force into here as it is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So the points which you will mention here, that the velocity is having two components. One is the parallel to magnetic field. Which does not experience the force. One other one is perpendicular to magnetic field. which experience a force and you have to mention the direction of the force, the direction of the force will be into. So one mark is when you mention the perpendicular component, uh, experience the force, which is a centripetal force, parallel is not affected and the direction of the force is into, that's how you will score all the three marks. Is it uh, clear this one? So if the same, another electron is there which entered directly perpendicular, so it will only experience the force into, like it will uh, remain in a circular path. There is no other component, so it will continue to rotate in a circle. But for this one, because there is another component, so what happened? It is moving in a circular path, and there is a component which is downward. That's why it is going downward. This. Any doubt in this? Question 11, the photograph shows a spark coil, a device used in early experiments of electricity. The diagram shows part of a spark coil. Like it's like a transformer, how a transformer works, that variable magnetic field in the primary produce a magnetized iron core and change in magnetic field of iron core induces EMF. So the, a coil of wire P is bound around an iron core. 
A second coil is there S, which hold around P. The end of S are connected to thin metal rod with a gap between them, known as a spark gap. The switch, when the switch is closed, there is a current in P. So current start to flow. When the switch is opened, the large potential is produced across S, and the spark is observed. So first, what happened? When we close this, there is a current start to flow through this coil P. And when the current start to flow, this will be a constant current. Like initially, when we close the switch, the current will be constant. And this current produces a magnetic field. But that magnetic field initially is constant. Then what happened? The moment we open the switch, as we are opening the switch, the magnetic field, like the current start to decrease. So the magnetic field also start to decrease or change. And that change in magnetic field, what will happen? It produce EMF in the secondary coil or coil S. As a result, when there's an EMF here, like the potential plus minus or minus plus is there, it will produce a spark like air is ionized. And as a result, when air is ionized, it will produce a spark. So explain how the potential differences produce across end S. So how the voltage or a potential is produced across this S, that first current in a primary coil or coil P produces magnetic field. The moment when you open the switch, the current start to change, so the magnetic field will also change when the switch is open. And change in a magnetic flux linkage or magnetic field induces EMF. So here, how the potential across S, potential is produced across S. So the current passing through P produce magnetic field. That's one thing. And as a result, when switch is open, the current start to decrease or change. And the change in the magnetic field induce EMF or you can also say potential. Then the potential across G is 110 kilovolts. Calculate the time taken for magnetic flux in the core to decrease to zero when the switch is open. The number of turns of the secondary is 42,000. The area of the cross-section is given and the maximum flux density is given 7.4. So according to the Faraday's law, the induced EMF is equals to the change in magnetic flux linkage, rate of change in magnetic flux linkage. So we can say new CMF is equals to N delta phi by delta E. And phi is equals to BA. So we can also say that induced CMF is equals to N delta BA divided by delta T. So we need this delta T. So delta T will be equal to N delta B A divided by EMF. The number of turns, that is 42,000 in the secondary. The magnetic field strength, that is 7.4. The area of the cross-section is 1.4 into H power minus 3 and divided by D C M F. As I mentioned here, uh, the new CMF is 110 kilo, so it will be 110 into 10 to power 3. So when we substitute, this will give us the change, the time interval, which is about 3.96 into 10 to power minus 3 seconds, or 3.96 milliseconds. That's the time it will take to change the magnetic field to zero.
Then question 12. Using both fields at the same time, it is possible to balance the force that the uh, balance the forces so that the path of electron is not deviated. Like what we did here, electron was experiencing the electric force and it deviated upward. Then in the same region, we apply a magnetic field. Here, magnetic field into the page when no electric field is going down. But when we apply the, in the same region, we have electric and magnetic field. So what will happen? This electron undeviatedly will pass through. So what will the condition in that case? It means the electric force and the magnetic force are equal. For such electron, the speed of the electron is given by equation. The speed of electron is voltage divided by distance between the spacing into the strength of magnetic field. So that this equation is correct. So how we can show that this equation is correct? First thing, the electric force is equal to magnetic force. Electric force is given by QVB. Uh, electric force is E is equal to F over Q. So F is equal to EQ. So it will be EQ. And magnetic force is given by QVB, where V is a speed here. So I'm writing it small. Then what about strength of magnetic field between the parallel plates? So V is equal to ED. So E is equal to V, the potential divided by D. That's a value for finding, uh, that's a formula for finding strength of magnetic field. So it will be V Q divided by D equals to Q, V is a speed and V. Then Q is common both sides. You can see, so Q can cancel with Q. So we can say V, the potential divided by D is equal to V is a speed. This V is a speed and V is a strength. Now we need speed, so it will be V the potential divided by D, V. So the speed at which the electron is moving, that's the potential divided by distance between the two plates and the strength of magnetic field. So this equation is true. So first what we did, we compare electric force with the magnetic and electric force is EQ, magnetic force is QVB. Q will cancel with Q and E is equals to V divided by D. We just substitute that value and get the value for speed. So this was the assignment related to electromagnetic effects.